So guys, I just had the pleasure to talk to Nancy. Uh, I managed to watch the film yesterday. It was incredibly moving, but as we were talking earlier, uh, the power maybe of this film, The Rape of Reese Taylor, is just that it is not just an emotional engagement, but it goes through the levels of, you know, the political commitment and the, the push and the drive to do something. So, first of all, I thank you for making this film and being part of it. Um, I just wonder how you... How was it for you, for example? Was it very difficult and hard to go through again, you know, to think about this and, you know, put it into words? And for you as well, you know, from a scholarship perspective, then going into such an emotional and personal way. Uh, uh, yes, it was very hard for me to speak to you talking about the, uh, the rape, right? So, uh, you have to put it close. Be closer. Well, the rape was very hard. I was uh, uh, on the family, and I was uh, nine years old at the time, but I remember the day like if it happened yesterday. And, uh, and we weren't so surprised that a black woman was being raped, but it hits you hard when it's your own family. And Reese was a very, very dear to me. She was like a mother. And uh, she took care of us because our mother passed away when I was uh, 13 months old. And she raised me. So she was like a dear mother. And the night that she was raped, we, uh, uh, we was told about it later on that night by the police that she was being taken away. And it hit us very hard. And I remember as a little boy, nine years old, I was standing on the porch crying and they and there was a police had set up a headquarters just across the street from my house and they was out looking for reason but finally they found and they they brought it into that station but when when i first heard the man had the gun that took her and when i hear that gun i knew they were took it away to kill her and i was very frightened because she was like a mother to me she raised the whole family it was seven of us and she was the oldest one. But uh, after that, she went on and um, they went through all the processes trying to prosecute these guys and they didn't get a, uh, anything done. And to Rosa Park, Rosa Park really stepped in. She was the one that, uh, that got it into uh, the, the grand jury and she also got it into another town, Montgomery, the grand jury. And uh, Rosa Park was at our house twice. She was treated very cruel there. First time she came, the police, the police come and uh, made her leave, and not to, told her not to come back to town anymore. She came back two weeks later, and this time that she was in the house, and the police busted in, opened the door without saying anything. Grabbed Rosa Park by the arm and pull her out in the house right by me and there were steps there to go down three steps and she uh, and he wouldn't allow her to walk on those steps he just snatched off the edge of the porch and she fell in the yard but she was a young woman at that time and um, and after that Rosa Park got into Montgomery and that's that's when she was uh, had the second grand jury um, as you said, I'm a scholar, so I actually spend a lot of my time in the archives um, reading about these cases and researching these cases. I, I work on sexual violence and racial violence from the Civil War to about the 1930s. Um, and I teach the um, Reese Taylor case in my civil rights course. Um, you know, people often say to me, how do you write about and teach about rape and, and racial violence? and um, it's hard. I mean, um, especially because it's I'm from the South. Um, it's my history. You know, when I saw the images of Reese, or when I heard Reese's sister Alma talking about her experience, it's hard to disconnect because it's not just words on a page. It's not a police report um, that you see how people's lives were affected and changed forever. Um, so working on the film 
was um, challenging but inspiring in new ways. Um, it just makes a difference when you can hear the voices of the people who lived through um, and experienced um, with Reese um, what happened that night and in the aftermath. Um, so. And watching the film, um, there's probably from also a kind of a European perspective, sounds very bad, but like I just mean that you just look at it and it's like, how is that even possible? You know, the, the, the arm of the law, the police, is completely just not doing what they don't <laughs> what they meant to be. Um, but at the same time, it's just like the systemic, let's call it like that, the systemic failure towards the African-American community of the police and the state is insane. And unfortunately, it's very contemporary and relevant today. Uh, what do you think, where is the right path, you know, because there's a lot of counter information, which is, of course, essentially needed. There's a lot of you know, movement towards, you know, a, finally an equity for everybody. But um, where's the, where, where, where can we step up? What is the actual path to do? Because, you know, nowadays as well, now we have also like almost a downfall towards the exact opposite. We're going backwards. So I just wonder, like, what you guys think we should keep doing in order to make, a, you know, this a better world? I mean, I think people have to keep speaking up and telling their stories. Um, I think for African Americans, when we see cases of police brutality, are we, you know, are we see, um, you know, black men being shot in the back by police officers? It's nothing new, right? It's part of a long history, right? Um, and police brutality has evolved, right? Um, I've done a lot of work on lynching um, and what a lot of that research shows that police officers were often a part of mob violence that was inflicted on black communities. Um, you know, so what do we do? You know, we do what, you know, Rosa Parks and the NAACP did in 1944. We expose it, right? We hope for justice, um, but as we know, um, justice retribution aren't always givens, right? But your voice is all you have, right? So I think what you see now is young African Americans speaking up, having a voice, saying this is wrong, this is wrong, this isn't right. Um, there's always pushback. There's always been pushback, right? Uh, the question is, when are we going to get to a point um, where black people aren't having to take to the streets? to get justice, right? Um, America loves, we love our ideas about democracy and equality, right? But on the ground, there's a real gap between those ideas and people's everyday lives, um, particularly for black people. Um, and so in many ways, as a historian, I'm like, context matters, so it matters that Ray C. Taylor's case happened in 1944. There's historical significance and relevance, but I also think one can draw a line and say, you know, this is police brutality, right? That this is um, people not having equal access to the legal system, right? Uh, and that those are patterns um, that are new. Well, you know, police violence is nothing new, like she said. And uh, <clears throat> one of the best things that we have now going for us, everybody's walking around with a camera on them. And, they, and there's no question to, uh, about that. But in the past when you was violated by the police, I'm talking about black people now, uh, you have no defense because what's in there where you uh, told the investigators that was mostly thrown out because she had no evidence, but the camera is the thing that we, we got going for us today. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pat. No, thank, thank you for you. being with us. No. Fred Film Radio, the Festival Inside.